Building Information Systems, Week 9. Alright, here's the contents of what, what I'm going to try and tackle today. And there are various readings in here. There's one here and another one further on. This is the Al-Mansour Aut Automotive IT Enabled Success. Now if you were starting an information system, what would you do? Steps in effective re-engineering. Pre-qualification, document generation, application processing, credit analysis and underwriting and approval and closing. We're also looking at business process management, TQM, Six Sigma, how information systems support quality improvements, and benchmarking. All of these are part of systems analysis. Building a system can be broken down into six core activities. Analysis, design, programming, testing, conversion or production not or and production and maintenance. Now if you had to plan last Friday's wedding what steps would you take? See first of all there's systems analysis. The questions to be asked are where are you going to be married? When are you going to be married? Who's on the guest list? Who's, where's the party going to be? How much can you afford? And are there any other questions? And all of these are an analysing the system you're going to do. Now if you set about designing a, your system, point number two, you have the decisions on the previous questions. Where married? Well, the decision will be London Westminster Abbey. When? April the 29th, 2011. The guest list. Queen, her mum, her dad, his dad, and all the other guests. Where are you going to hold it? Well, you've got a palace to hold it in. How much can you afford for this wedding? Well, quite a lot of money. Any other questions? Those are the considerations you must bring about in systems design. So where to start? But you've got to build all the information in building a system can be broken down into the bride's information and the groom, groom's information and, 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 right, so programming. Now, once you've built your program, you've got to test it. A month before, a week before, the day before. Once it's been built, then you need to test it out and and then run a trial or do a trial run through. So that's in the third step, programming. No it isn't, that's in the fourth step, testing. Now instead of designing a totally new system you could have gone for a conversion how was your mother, or your grandmother, or your great-grandmother married? So you could look at their plans and then convert them to your own plans. So you've got a parallel strategy, a direct cutover, a pilot study, a phased approach. So there are another four things regarding conversion. Alright, once you've done either a conversion or number one, 
then the next thing you've got to worry about is production and maintenance. After a new system is in, then you've got to look at how it works. OK. Now, there is an alternative system building approach. This one, prototyping. So you go through the steps in, a, in prototyping, identifying the user's basic requirements, developing an initial prototype, using this prototype, and then revising and en enhancing the prototype. And you can see that this is not too diff different from the previous steps that were taken. traditional system life cycle, prototyping, end user development, application software packages and outsourcing, and then application development for the digital firm. Alright, here's a reading. Now one of the things that, that, that I find is if I find a system and then I try and use it the problem is I, I can't actually put the film onto my lecture notes so here's where it comes from and I've taken it off the net building information systems you could say we build applications like we build railroads there are multiple stages of planning that you've got to go through agreed upon destinations, predetermined stops, rigid schedules to maximize efficiency rather than user demand. Of course there's little room for, room for flexibility and adaptability if you are designing a rail, railroad. These characteristics are critically important to, ro to train lines and certain typical certain types of applications such as accounting. Of course where events are ant anticipated and planned for but if you don't go for that you can't suddenly take a left turn if you're setting down a rail track or a railroad. This approach doesn't work well when events cannot be easily anticipated and responses need to be made up on the minute, sorry, up on the fly, um, as things are happening really. A dynamic business environment looks a, l a lot more like this than Charlie Chaplin on these wheels. The need for a dynamic business environment is more closely reflected in the process that a taxi driver, taxi cab companies use in response to demand. The taxi cruises the streets with only flexible strategies, allowing for customers to suddenly shout out. Decisions are made as closely as possible to the time when actions must be taken. The driver makes decisions on the spot consistent with passenger needs. In a train methodology, the organization plans in advance and passengers must adjust their plans accordingly. In a taxi approach, the organization must adjust in real time to the passenger whose plans are almost unknown most of the time. This requires organizations to embrace uncertainty, dynamic demand and in some degree of chaos learn to thrive on it. The rest is left to flexibility, adaptability, creativity of the individual agents as the content continually changes. This is all possible because the infrastructure is already in place. Imagine a taxi if they had to provide the roads. <laughs> no, no, they don't need to worry about this. Their roads are already there, so it's easy. If they had to be, 
if they had to be uh, um, paying for the roads as well, now that would cause them real problems. Situational application platforms give you a, the infrastructure to build systems, whereas there is uncertainty and change. But you need a different mindset to get the most out of them. You can't build or run a rail like you would a taxi company. If your world, world view of things included the belief that the earth was flat, it would be highly unlikely that you'd set off on an ocean voyage for fear of falling over the edge. Of course, there's another way. You think less of cogs and things and more of the open road. Build information systems less that look like a train journey from A to B and more like a road network with various choices. A taxi company works here. A train company works here, but sometimes companies are more like here. Taxi cab organizations are complex adaptive systems, just like your business. So the edge of chaos is a place where there is enough innovation to keep a living system vibrant and enough stability to keep it from collapsing into anarchy. This was said by Joseph Campbell in On the Edge of Chaos, Navigating Through Global Change. Situational application platforms allow you to build information systems at the edge of chaos by providing a stable, evolving platform upon which you can innovate, experiment, adapt and take advantage of opportunities as they arrive. To get the most out of it, you need a different methodology, mindset and, in, and support into your mechanism because complex, uh, complex adaptive systems don't work like clockwork. The health, competitive power and even survival of an enterprise is la largely depends on its ability to understand and harness the power of knowledge workers who are enabled to take responsibility for, for, for providing automatic solutions to meet many of their business needs. IBM Systems Journal 2008 Now here's another system. Define, measure, analyze, improvement, control. Define, measure, analyze, design, optimize and verify. This is designing another system, isn't it? Look carefully at these and you'll see what I mean. That's what I've looked through today. I hope this has been helpful in leading you to think about how systems are created. Thank you.